much going on regarding recruits and commits. Justin Medlock, Isaiah Horton, and uh, oh boy, I didn't write it down correctly. Mr. Carswell, he's got a he's got a very uh, unusual first name, Falenta, but he goes by Flip. Uh, okay, is his nickname. So Garen Justice, the offensive line coach, posted uh, a GIF of uh, a gymnast doing lots of backflips. And people were like, oh, who's flipping? Da, da, da. I'm like, no, 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 that's his nickname. Uh, so Flip Carswell from Georgia, uh, a basketball player turned football player coming up for this year. So he's not played football yet, but 6'7", 275, uh, interior uh, paint player, you know, a center, a post in basketball, um, making his way to the football field just because he's, he's big. And – he has a lot of potential. There's a lot of teams that were looking to get him on campus, Michigan and Oregon being at the forefront of that list after he came down to Miami, got an offer, uh, you know, things like that. Um, but he, those trips are canceled and he committed to Miami uh, to come on down and uh, be a, you know, a developmental offensive tackle prospect. So do not expect him to step in day one, like Chantrell Henderson. You know what I mean? Um, he's not going to be that, but, he has the potential to grow and develop into being very good. And he has very good footwork, you know, that's transferable from football to bat. I'm oh, sorry, basketball to football, good balance, things like that. You know, your slide drills, your defensive drills, all kinds of those things. Very athletic guy uh, posted a video of him swatting something out of the air, out of the sky um, on the basketball court. And it is welcome to the U piece that I wrote. Um, and I also put in there and I know people are always like, bro, we know that you used to work at Miramar, da, 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 da. but the comparison was too perfect. And I put it in the Welcome to the EPs. The progressional path of Yadni Kajust is what you want, that or better, for Flip Carswell. Yadni Kajust went to North Miami, transferred to Miramar. He was 6'5-ish, post player. Coach went to him as a sophomore when he came over to Miramar and said, look, you need to play football. Nah, I'm a basketball player. Junior year, you need to play football. Ah, I'm a basketball player. Junior year spring, he started and went over to football. They played him a defensive line, a defensive tackle, defensive end. He settled at offensive line. So he played offensive line. Goes through commits to West Virginia because the coach at the time, Damon Cogdo, went to West Virginia. And Mayor Mar was sending a lot of kids to West Virginia if they're not going other places. So Kajus goes there. Red shirts, plays, gets injured, and then ends his fifth year as the Big 12 lineman of the year, uh, second team All American, first team All Conference and gets drafted in the third round and still in the NFL. And again, this is a guy, and I I think, you know, well, no, he wasn't in my class, but I was always around announcing everything. I knew all those kids and all those players from there, and I saw it myself. This is a 6'5", 255-pound guy who transitions to football, plays offensive tackle, again, ends his career as the award-winning best offensive lineman in the Big 12, gets drafted in the third round. I think it was 101 overall or something like that. That's the progressional path or better that you want from Carswell. And are there other basketball players, turn football players? Da, da, da? Yes. But again, having seen that, and especially at the back end of the career, award-winning second team All-American, first team All-Conference, da, 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 all those things, it is very possible. And you don't have to look far in the rearview mirror for a, a, a undersized post turn football player playing offensive line with the developmental path that you want as the median if you cannot exceed that with car as well. And that was Yadnik adjust again, from Miramar High School and then West Virginia and then wherever he got drafted, uh, Patriots, excuse me, in the league. Um, so you want that from car as well. And he has that kind of frame. And he could, again, either follow that developmental path or be better. The second commitment since we've last spoken was Justin Medlock, a linebacker from Manville, Texas. If you're thinking that name sounds familiar, it should. That is the same high school at which Derek King once starred years ago. Obviously, we did not get Derek King straight out of high school, but that's why you've heard it, you've seen it. It's been, you know, on your brain for a while. Um, he's a guy who was uh, like Texas Defensive Player of the Year as a sophomore, only played three games and got injured as a junior, uh, but uh, had already had 24 tackles, seven tackles for loss, two sacks, and some other peripheral stats in the three games that he played. Uh, so he's 6'1", 210, is uh, literal, you know, he, he runs track uh, and does pretty well for himself out there in Texas where, we you know, we get lots of, of, of fast guys. So Medlock brings uh, skill and speed to the uh, linebacker position, which are two things that we need. Uh, good up on uh, John Packey 
who's from Texas, going back to Texas and getting a linebacker. Also, this follows up getting another Houston linebacker in Corey Flagg a couple of years ago. Uh, so it's not all of what we need at linebacker, but that's a step in the right direction. The third recent commit since the last time we spoke was just the other day, uh, Isaiah Horton uh, from Murfreesboro, Oakland uh, High School in Tennessee. Um, 36 catches, 693 yards, and seven touchdowns for an undefeated state championship team last year. Uh, was, is, and will be the focus of their passing game. Uh, you can just turn on this highlight. The first two catches of his highlights are an underthrown post where I reach back with my right hand. And then a fade thrown to the back corner that I have one-handed with my left hand. So you get about 47 seconds into his highlight film, and you see one-handed catches with either hand. So it don't matter which hand comes to play today. I got you. And there's more to it than that. He's 6'3", 195 pounds. So he has the size that has been lacking at the wide receiver position. Absent a couple of guys. Um, you know, Brian Hightower, Lawrence Cager, and then the FSU killers themselves, Daryl Langham and D. Wiggins are the only receivers that we've had that are taller than 6'2". Uh, over recent years, and you get another guy, Isaiah Horton brings that dynamic uh, to the wide receiver room, you know, because even again, a guy like Michael Redding, who is shredded, he's six one, two hundred something pounds. He's not six three. You know what I mean? So this is a different uh, size receiver. You pair him with Landon Abeta, who's you know in that six feet tall kind of range. Uh, so you have extra height there. Hopefully, you get. Um, I would honestly almost be good with them two. I mean, you probably want to go after Jaden Gibson, who's leaning towards Florida, but you, you would like to have those three. But again. If this year is the year the defensive lineman or defensive end, edge rusher in South Florida, next year's class is all about the wide receivers. All about the wide receivers. There's so there's more you can chase stick at. And, I mean, there always are in South Florida. But next year, the elite of the elite, there's so many of them. So, again, you want to get numbers and quality every year. Uh, but you're two-thirds of the way there because Abeda is way underrated. I don't care what anybody says. Open your eyes and watch the film. You can open your eyes again and watch the film uh, with Horton and and it is clear, it jumps off the screen, and then hopefully you add another player of that kind of caliber. So you have those three guys who have committed since the last time we talked a couple weeks ago. 